UN Women UK released a statistic that shocked men and resonated with women. 97% of women in the UK aged 18 to 24 have been sexually harassed. Remember that when asking why we still need feminism. 96% of women did not report the sexual harassment because of a belief that it would not change anything. Here are just some experiences women have been through. I was recorded without my knowledge or consent during sex with someone I trusted and I only realised because I swung my arm around at the right time. Since then, to avoid it when I'm intimate with anyone, I make sure I can see and feel their hands at all times. I was also by corn exchange waiting for a taxi after a night out and a random man came and smacked my bum. There wasn't much I could do about that, but I just prefer to wait with a friend now. I have to park in multi-stories quite a lot. And my mum taught me, never unlock your car door until the last minute. When you get in, lock the door straight away and don't drive until you've checked the back. Anonymous. My story isn't very traumatic, but I hope it helps. I remember being at a Court and Ears concert in Liverpool with a friend. We were 16, 17 at the time, and a man approached us in the smoking area chatted to us, then proceeded to say, you have a nice arse, and put his hand on my bum. I just kind of stepped away and looked at him weird, but now I wish I punched him. Anonymous. I bought an attack alarm which can be attached to your lanyard. You pull the string out and it's very loud. Also comes with a torch. I will never walk home in the dark, especially late, but if I really need to go to the shops and it's dark, I'll carry this with me. Also, the five press lock on iPhones to call the police is a brilliant thing to have. It is amazing. You can make it play a loud alarm and a countdown to a 999 phone call, or you can choose it so it does it silently. Abigail Louise Marks. Had a random guy grab my butt in the street. I think I was 13. Was punched in the nightclub for saying no to a man. Had a stalker from 18 to about 23. Had a guy slap me for refusing to go to his hotel. Had the usual workman whistle at me, again around age 13. I had two boys hold me down in a swim pool to touch me up. I was about 11 that time. Men grabbing my arm because I have tattoos and they wanted to look at them. Taxi drivers making sexual comments. One telling me to leave my children home alone so I could come meet him. So, so many different times things like this happened. Had my uncle look at me like a piece of meat, then tell me I should wear short skirts to show off my legs. Had a policeman text me non-stop after my car had been stolen. Had army men chat me up while in school uniform. I was 14. Had my driving instructor get all handsy with me. Kept putting his hand on my thigh. Had numerous men walk up to me and put their arm around me while trying to chat me up. Had all the comments of, you're an ugly bitch, slut, lesbian, if I refuse them. The response when I say I'm not interested is that I am a lesbian. It's awful. Again, turns into sexual comments, sometimes extremely graphic comments. Or, dick pics, had loads, most definitely not wanted or asked for. Had a guy scare me really badly, saying, I love the look of fear in your eyes, like a deer caught in the headlights. Lisa McGee. I went to a women's self-defence class and got a printed handout of 10 different steps to take in the case of assault which I stuck up next to my door so I can look at it and remind myself every time I go out. Beatrix Haxby. I don't know if this is relevant. However, my friend's boyfriend grabbed me by my vagina in the club one time, and I screamed. That friend wasn't in the club that night, but my other friend saw and laughed at how loud I screamed. I tried to tell my friend, and she said I was lying. Since then, if I get touched, I just don't tell anybody because I thought nobody cared or would believe me. It's not a terrible story, but now I think, damn, sexual harassment or being touched inappropriately is kind of taken as an unserious thing. Anonymous. I was walking home from work one night and noticed I was being followed. I took my key out of my bag and ran my brother with the keys between my knuckles. As I sped up and my breathing rate changed, I started to panic, noticing that he had sped up as well following my route to my home. Luckily, my brother was outside the gate waiting for me to come to him and he noticed the man turn around, shaking his head. Caitlin Doherty.
Don't know if it counts or not, but a guy at work told me to sit on his lap on a lunch break. When another male who heard called him out on it, he denied even seeing it. Also had another situation where the police had to be involved and I got told to drive to and from work, essentially changing my lifestyle. The incident with the police was again at work and was down to a customer harassing me, like giving me cards and dodgy USB sticks and stuff. Spoke to my manager who did nothing, anonymous. Hollyguard is an app that you can download. If you activate its panic function, it sends a video and voice recording of the last 10 seconds or so to your preset emergency contacts, as well as your last location. I set it when I have to go out in dark. Danny Butler. This is by no means the worst thing that's happened to me, but it is very relevant to walking alone at night. I was 18, but looked pretty young, so could have easily been underage. It must have been about 7 or 8 p.m. I was walking from my accommodation to the train station, 10 minute walk on busy and well lit street. A middle aged man who might have been on drugs stopped me by sticking his thumb out. I thought he might be asking for directions, so I stopped, and he asked if I was single. I said no, and he said, are you sure? Which didn't seem threatening at the time, but it's certainly weird. I said, yes, I'm sure, and moved on. I shit you not, about 30 seconds later, a much older man, very obviously grabbing his penis, walked past me and said, nice tits. I was wearing a turtleneck jumper and a jacket. I was minding my own business. Anonymous. I've recently bought personal alarms for myself and the female members of my family. My mum would usually be very dismissive of things like this, telling me I'm being overly sensitive. But this time, she was eager to have it. I didn't have to convince her at all. Haley would. I had a job last summer and my boss took a liking to me. I was 20 and he was 36. Let's call him Ben. He would follow me around and make any excuse to come near me and say really inappropriate things that obviously made me uncomfortable, but he seemed to like the power dynamic. I didn't feel I was in a position to tell him to stop because I needed the money. One time he invited me to his office just to speak about my life and once again made inappropriate comments. I thought he was trying to find out as much as possible about me and was worried he would stalk me. One day my boyfriend overheard some managers in the smoking area saying that Ben said he was going to have sex with me. Apparently, he had told a few people. A couple of days later, I was pulled into a HR meeting where they asked why I had been spreading rumours about me and Ben. I denied all and told what I heard, but they were obviously on his side and trying to protect him. They gaslighted me into thinking it was my fault. I left that day and tried to block it out, but I can't get over how everyone just let him get away with it. I got told after it was his old trick, so he must have done it to other young girls too. This went on for weeks too. And I realised the other day that I've had seven jobs since I was 13, and in every single one but my current, I have been sexually harassed. When I was 15, 18, my boss was 54-ish. He used to slap my bum and kiss my shoulder and call me baby. I have many more stories when I think of it. Anonymous. I was at a friend's housewarming one night. I got quite drunk and took myself to sleep in my girlfriend's room. A while passed and my friend whose bed I was in came in and fell asleep next to me. Moments later, a male friend of ours entered the room and got into the bed next to me. I woke up to him touching and kissing me. I consistently told him no, to stop and that our friend was also right next to me in the bed. He continued and told me it was fine because she was asleep. I continued to tell him no and to stop, but he persisted. I ended up sobering up really quick and ran out of the room to rejoin the party as I was too frightened to fall asleep if he was still there. Another time, a friend asked to stay at my place and I stated to him before we got home that I was not going to do anything sexual or have sex with him. He then decided to shove his hands in my pants, to which I responded with, no, stop. And he replied with, what? I don't care that you don't shave. Since this encounter, he has tried to make contact several times to ask to give him another shot. 
He didn't get it for an entire year. He has now stopped contacting me since he has flown home to his country. I met a photographer out one night who said he would like to take my photo sometime. He showed me his professional Instagram with tasteful photos of women. I agreed to model for him a few months after him persistently asking. During the shoot, he made very inappropriate comments and told me how many women he has slept with. He sent unsolicited dick pics after this and didn't use a single photo he took of me. This is just skimming the surface. I have so, so many stories. It makes me sick. Anonymous. It's not as extreme, but it was enough to set my teeth on edge. I am really new to Leeds and I also live alone. I was walking up the street to my flat a few doors down when a man, maybe early 30s, pulled over and got out of his car to talk to me. He started telling me how I must study fashion because I was dressed so nice, and then asking where I lived and what I did and how long had I been in Leeds, and if I knew anyone here. This was in broad daylight, so I just smiled and was polite and vague, while being hyper aware that my flat was a couple of houses away and how I desperately did not want him to know where I lived. This went on for maybe 10 minutes, with me trying to leave as gently as possible and him trying to get closer and closer to me to hug him or shake his hand goodbye or something. I just said we couldn't because of Covid. I made sure he drove well away before I went into my flat. I wasn't verbally abused, but I was just so uncomfortable as a woman alone that I knew I wanted to get away and defuse the scenario as quickly as possible. Anonymous. It was around 9.30pm and I decided to step outside my accommodation for some fresh air. I was 20 metres away from my entry gate when a man approached me asking for my number to which I replied sorry, no, and walked a few steps away. Instead of accepting my answer and moving along, he started insisting that I give him my number and started to get angry when I declined again. I started to tense up and decided to walk away. The man stood in front of accommodation door so if I had to get back in, I would have to confront him. I decided to pretend that I was going somewhere and wasn't planning on returning to my accommodation anytime soon, but at the same time, I didn't want to walk too far since I was new to the city and didn't know it well. I looked over my shoulder only to see that man had started following me on his scooter. I climbed the stairs that were right next to me, which led him to go back to my accommodation door and wait for me. That man sat right next to my accommodation, so I'd have to cross paths with him in order to get back to my accommodation. Not knowing what to do, I prepared myself to move quickly and had the entry card ready. I took the other route and swiftly walked towards the gate, and as soon as that man saw me, he got on his scooter and started to come my way again. My car didn't work in the first two swipes, and he got really close to me, but luckily the card swiped the third time and I entered my accommodation. The man stood in front of my accommodation and looked inside for 10 to 15 seconds before finally leaving me alone. Anonymous. One of the experiences that sticks in my mind was maybe one or two years ago. My friends and I had gone on a night out and we were having a great time. We were drinking and dancing and just enjoying ourselves. It was really busy, so I didn't notice a guy coming up behind me. He was pressed up against me, but I just thought that was because the room was packed. It was uncomfortable but I thought it was only going to be for a couple of seconds until he found space. Next thing I know, his hand was grabbing onto my breast and I just freeze. I'd had a few drinks, so I was not thinking as straight as I would be if I was sober and I was just so shocked and overwhelmed that I did the whole wide-eyed stare my whole body froze. I didn't know what to do or how to react, so his hand just stayed there gripping me. It was quite firmly from memory, like it was rough and he leant down and whispered in my ear, I'm going to ruin your life. It just really shook me because not only had he felt that he was entitled to touch my body, but also what he whispered made me really scared. It gave all power to him, and I genuinely didn't know what he wanted to do to me. For all I knew, he wanted to harm me. The encounter must have only lasted a few seconds, but because my whole body had frozen up in fear, it felt so much longer to me. I was lucky that my friends were right there because they protected me and took me out, which I hadn't been able to do for myself and I dread to think what could have happened if they hadn't been there. I had an anxiety attack and was crying with my friends for about 20 minutes. I was so scared that he was going to find me again and I just felt like my whole night had been ruined and I wanted to go home.
My friends wanted to stay, so we went to a different room. I was just so self-conscious the entire time, and was on guard in case anyone else tried to do the same. The next morning, I told my boyfriend at the time what had happened, and after I had recounted the experience, his first question was, did you push his hand away? So I reiterated that I'd kind of frozen in the moment and the details were a bit hazy. My boyfriend kept pushing and asking questions, trying to gauge whether I had acted correctly, and then started having a go at me because I hadn't pushed the guy's hand off quick enough. The experience itself was so dehumanising, but then to seek comfort and support from someone who was meant to understand, and for them to suggest that the blame was on me and that I should have acted differently, it just really hurt and I didn't want to go out or speak to people for a while. I just wanted to curl up in bed where I knew it was just me and I was safe from judgement. My boyfriend's reaction sent me spiralling into overthinking whether I had acted correctly and I didn't realise it at the time but it was a classic case of victim blaming. The fact that I had experienced an invasion upon my body but it was somehow seen as my fault. It felt like another betrayal. Cat. I was followed through a bus station in the dark by some guy who was bragging about being a photographer for EDL marches. It was dark and there were back lanes everywhere. I kept saying bye, but he kept walking with me in the opposite direction he had been walking before. My bus wasn't coming for an hour, and I was going to have to walk down a horrible back lane to get home. Then I saw someone I barely knew from school, and ran up and hugged her and whispered in her ear I needed help. She and her boyfriend watched the guy while I got back down this while I got down this back lane, and he stood waiting for them to leave so he could follow until they confronted him. It was absolutely terrifying. He just seemed really disconnected. Scarlet Isabella. Just had an experience yesterday. I walked from my place of work to the mall to get lunch for myself and a colleague. The two buildings are maybe 200 metres apart with a bridge and a polluted stream in between. As I walked, some asshole jumped out at me from the stream and onto the road, shouting, Hey, nice. This stranger, right in my face. I say hi in as bored a way I can manage and walk on, trying not to react to the heart attack I just got. At the mall, I start panicking. I will have to walk back the same way. I get pepper spray. I walk with my hand on the button, ready to spray and run. I try to walk against the closest fence so the guy won't see me coming. I see parked police vans, four at least. No cops are around though, and I would maybe be more scared of them, seeing as how my last visit to a police station ended in an officer harassing me about girls like me, not dating guys like him. I had been trying to report a break-in. Luckily, the bridge was empty on my walk back. No police and no asshole. However, I will not be walking that way again. Anonymous. At 16, I went into a hotel room with a guy. I thought we were friends. And then he tried to rape me. I screamed until thankfully two men who, wa who worked at the hotel entered and proceeded to help me and called the police. Sadly, not soon enough, but I'm still very grateful as he was very aggressive and threatening. At the age of 17, my ex-boyfriend told me I was invited to a party with his best friend, who I got along with also, so I didn't expect anything to be weird. I then had a few drinks and passed out in the spare bedroom. I woke up to his fingers inside me. Didn't call the police, as my boyfriend didn't want me to. Just before I turned 18, my boyfriend broke my ID, so I couldn't go up to town to celebrate. This was the start of recurring abuse, which includes stalking and beating, and eventually led to me being drowned in a lake at the local park. He kept me at the park for three hours during the night, so no one was around. I tried to escape by saying I really needed the toilet. He was holding me for hours while screaming and repeatedly hurting me. He made me take off my jeans and made me squat until I actually urinated. He was accusing me of lying and trying to run away, and I needed to prove I wasn't by weeing in front of him, and he said he would drown me again if I didn't. I managed to get loose and run away while doing my jeans up and ran out of a park onto a road and tried to make a car stop for me. Loads went past and saw me bloody and didn't stop. Eventually, someone did and I got help by Gloucestershire Domestic Abuse and Advice Service, and he went to prison, but only for three months, and not before he shared pictures and videos of me passed out and naked on social media. 
He only got three months for a year of repeated rape, abuse and basically attempted murder. Anonymous. I had an older man expose himself to me in the bus station. It was during the day and I was with my boyfriend, so it really made me think. I was this scared and shocked. And how would I have reacted if it happened on my walk to work at 5am in the morning? And also how confident these people are that they will never get caught. One morning, 5am, walked five minutes to catch the bus from where I live. The bus didn't come and I was waiting for an Uber when this guy pulled up in front of me, rolled his window down and started yelling slurs at me for the next few minutes until my Uber arrived. I told him I will call the police but he told me that they won't arrive in time to save me if I get him mad. I can't explain the fear I felt as I was convinced he would attack me but I was already too far from home and by myself. I moved towards a CCTV camera and hope for the best, which is something I don't wish on anybody. It was just three minutes, but felt like an hour. Third story happened back at home. I was waiting for a friend at a bus stop at 6pm. It was kind of dark as it was winter. I was approached by a man who for 15 minutes asked for my Instagram. I finally gave up, knowing that he would not leave me alone, and I could always block him later. He finally left, but before that he forced kissed me on the lips and all that. I was disgusted and upset for the rest of the night. These are just three more recent events. Sadly, like most, if not all women, I have more. Anonymous. I was 13 and I would ride at the stable and work there. I didn't have the best home life at the time, so the stables were my safe place. There would be other people there too, like some younger guys and girls. However, there was this one guy who was in his 30s. I don't think he was all there. However, he was aware enough to know that what I'm about to say was wrong. I was in the kitchen alone as everyone had gone out to ride. However, this guy was still there, so it was just us. I looked behind me and he was there in this tiny kitchen, very close to me. He hugged me from behind and rested his head on my breast. And I've also missed out a few other details. I completely froze and didn't say anything at all. I then caught him looking at me and staring at me and that safe amazing place I would love to go to quickly turned to an unsafe place just because an older man couldn't help not invade my, a 13 year old's, space. I never went back and didn't tell anyone. I thought it was all my fault. I thought it was me that was in the wrong place at the wrong time and that I just simply should have worn something else. It was a hot summer's day and I was literally wearing a dark polo shirt. I was literally 13 and I blamed myself. That was the first experience that made me afraid of men because I realised how easy it was to get away with things like that. Now I stay very aware of my surroundings and I try and keep to myself. Regarding being catcalled, I just give disgusted looks or tell them to fuck off to be honest. But it really depends on the situation as I wouldn't want to get myself in more danger. Anonymous. In 2018, I broke my arm and leg. As I have dyspraxia, I had to use a Zimmer frame instead of walking support sticks. My leg brace was too thick to wear trousers over, because I'm quite large. Men would regularly try and look up my skirt, but showed more than it normally would have because of my position hunched over the frame. When I started to heal, I went to King's Cross without my mum's support for the first time. I was going up the escalator, and this man got on the step next to me. He started saying, I've got a sickness. And I was like, are we disability bonding here? And then he continued. All the women I've been with tell me I'm insatiable. I'm horny. I'm always so horny. Fuck me. I want you to fuck me. I was taken aback and silent for a second before I screamed loud enough for the people at the top to hear me. He ran away from me. A man at the top of the escalator told me to be quiet and I shouted at him too. A woman going down on the other escalator was the only one to ask if I was okay. I went straight to the police and filed a report. They could have caught the guy in two minutes if they wanted to, but they didn't. I never heard back from the police even though I gave my details. I've been sexually harassed more times than I can count, even though I'm not conventionally attractive. I know that it's about power because I've never experienced sexual harassment as bad as when my disabilities became visible. I don't wear my leg brace anymore, I just don't go out if I need it. I don't use my walking stick, I don't allow myself to look disabled because it makes me look vulnerable. I have more incidents, but I wanted to share this with you. 
I carry around skin dye spray now, a kitty knuckle brace keyring, and I had to have my male friend meet me on Sunday after my midnight library slot. Danielle Grayman. I work on a bar. The experiences are limited to your imagination only. However, on one particular occasion, I refused to work until someone was removed from the bar. The manager's response at the time? I'm pretty sure he is gay. He's harmless. Because that's a valid excuse among men, apparently. Megan Newton. 97% of women have a story like this. Most women have a collection of stories like these. The majority of these experiences are never reported. Women are used to experiencing sexual harassment to the point where it is a norm. Every incident is serious and needs to be treated so. Many women plan precautions to avoid harassment on a daily basis. It shouldn't have to be like this. There needs to be a change in our society. Sexual harassment should have never become a norm. Don't accept it. Do what you can to fight against it.